Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. In today's video, we are checking out something different, not something that we're normally covering on this channel, but I think it's interesting because it is something that I am definitely interested in. And it's actually a computer keyboard. It wor works with a Mac or a PC or any other device as well, um, as you shall see, because it has both wired and Bluetooth capabilities, which is fairly cool. And it's a low free flow, low profile mechanical keyboard. I think that this is a Kickstarter campaign, but I don't know for how long it actually lasts. So maybe by the time the video comes out, maybe the campaign is already done or not. Unfortunately, because of the move and everything has been delayed and I've had this device uh, unit for uh, quite some time with me, but because of the move that everything has been delayed. But now we are covering it so that you guys can actually know if you see one of these in the wild or if it's still available as a Kickstarter or if it comes out in mass sales, if this is something that might be for you or not. And here is the low free flow uh, 84 key dual mode low profile mechanical keyboard. So this has been sent to me as a review sample by the low free uh, kindly, but uh, that's pretty much it. This is not a sponsored video or anything like that. So I'm just, uh, yeah, my opinions are my own. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's unbox this, see what we get. The initial packaging feels really good. It feels nice and kind of proper. So let's open it up and see what we get inside of this nice packaging. Yeah, I guess we can slide this off. And then probably magnetic. Yes, magnetic opens up. Low free customized all palm low profile mechanical switches. Okay, cool. So we have this. We have the low free all on Chinese. So I can, uh, can't read that. Get some more, I guess a sticker, some more stuff, all right? And I would guess that this is a user manual but it is also all, no, the other side is in English. All right, so that's good. So from the side here, we get a USB, good quality USB cable, nice and thick. And I like that it's a right angle um, USB. So that's pretty cool. And I guess that's what we're using to hook up to a uh, computer or a device. And in here we get the keyboard itself as well. So let's get it out. Ooh, that feels really good. So uh, let's clear up this mess and then start focusing on this one. All right, before I get into the actual uh, keyboard itself, I want to cover the user manual and the specifications of it because I think it's kind of important to cover that. So it has 84 hot swappable uh, key pads supported, uh, multifunction keys 16. It is made out of aluminum alloy uh, unibody, PBT keycaps, has a type C USB interface, and it supports both wired and and Bluetooth uh, connectivity, which is excellent. Flow name, Bluetooth flow, uh, Bluetooth name is Flow84 at low free, and dimensions are 316, 126, and 24.5 millimeters. Doesn't say what the weight is, but because it's kind of metal, it's nice and weighty. Um, then we have basic operations here and kind of the layout. It's saying that the number one here is the battery indicator, so that's going to be a battery indicator light then we have the caps lock light over here which has a multi functionality as you'll see soon then we have the ambient light which is I guess down there uh, the control for it and then we have the mode switch which toggles between off wired and Bluetooth so off on on is wired and Bluetooth is Bluetooth and we have type C interface which is wired uh, connectivity and charging on the back so now it goes through detailed connectivity and options as I said so you have off on and 
a Bluetooth mode. In order to use it in a wired connection, you use the uh, supplied cable. The right angled cable goes into the keyboard. The regular USB goes into your uh, laptop or computer. Um, to use the Bluetooth, you switch on to the Bluetooth mode, you long press function and uh, one, two or three and you keep it until the caps lock starts uh, blinking uh, slowly blue. Then you find it under the list, you connect to it, and once it's connected, uh, it will keep for three seconds, and that's that. Once you've established your connectivity with the function one, two, three, you can just uh, go function one, two, and three to switch between uh, different devices that three different devices that you are allowed to hook this keyboard up to. Use of ambient light is again function, and this time you use the side key here to uh, switch between steady light, breathe, which you get is the fade in, fade out, and off. Uh, similarly, when you're using the function key and the right uh, arrow, you will be able to switch between um, ambient color uh, switch. So um, function and plus N in the lower right corner is to trigger the corresponding system function key of Windows, Android, function and M. The lower right corner is to trigger the corresponding system function of Mac iOS. And then you have regular F1 through uh, 12 with delete and other stuff and helpful shortcuts here with the doubling functionality such as muting volume up and down, play pause, previous one, brightness up and down, uh, search and similar things like that. Screen brightness, uh, oh backlight, okay so F5 and 6 is backlight control intensity for the keyboard I would assume. So that's pretty good and then you have health and safety statements and instructions. All right, so that's the functionalities of the low free uh, mechanical keyboard. Now let's check out the actual keyboard finally and uh, see what it's like. Well, as I said, it's weighty and nicely built. Has non-adjustable legs on the end, uh, on the rear end, and that's something that uh, may be okay, but it would have been nicer to actually have seen something that allows you to go between me medium and higher position for the angle itself because maybe some people prefer a slightly different angle and maybe even a tilt back. So that is definitely lacking. Overall, the build quality looks very, very nice. So these two are your ambient light that we've talked about. So that's probably gonna shine and then bounce off and give you the ambient lighting. Then you have the USB uh, or the mode switch, which goes from off, on and uh, Bluetooth. It's nice and chunky and it kind of works fine. And right next to it is the USB connectivity port. So let's see how that fits because it's uh, rather chunky. Yeah, nice and satisfying click and no this is not going to fall out if you just move the keyboard around here or there or somebody just moves it uh, uh, quickly so this securely actually uh, is staying in the keyboard which is a good thing to see um, overall the quality le looks pretty good I like the exposed screws it gives it a nice kind of chunky industrial type of uh, feel and quality and you know the right hand side you have this uh, brass looking I would say brass looking uh, metal piece with the low free logo there then you have the battery indication and all of that sorts and now on to the stuff that actually matters which are the keys themselves so the layout of the keys I think is quite nice and the size of the keys is quite nice the caps and the actual keycaps uh, feel good the material feels good and the switches feel also very nice they're quite tactile they're clicky but not clacky right so they're nice and clicky and the indentation the shape 
of the keycaps is actually quite nice as is the roundedness of each of the corners i do like that because that actually gives a not only just a nice pleasant feel but it gives you a little bit more freedom to type so you at least me for example i won't be easily catching the corners and mistyping so there's quite a lot of uh, breathing room here even though that this is a very very uh, small profile and low profile uh, keyboard as it says as far as low profile goes well you can see it's very very low profile but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have good travel distance as you can see the travel distance is quite nice so um without plugging it in of course i'll plug it in but let's see first first impressions of typing or uh, rather mock typing i think it's nice uh but this kind of the the uh the the spacing between them might be a little bit too much for my taste. I guess you can get used to it after a while. Uh, so it's good that it doesn't give you like false positives, but I can still catch like two buttons with this one. And I guess it's gonna come down to personal preference, but my initial impression is that the keys might be a little bit too spread apart. But that being said, already now after like, what, a minute or two, uh, I am starting to get used to this and the feeling is very nice. All right, so I think that it feels uh, good. I think that the layout is good. Everything is here in uh, uh, where I would expect it to be, the, the regular things. Now, uh, as far as the layouts goes, as far as I know, I don't think that they have other layouts currently available. So I asked them, do you have a Nordic layout? Nope, they just had the US layout here. So you might want to check which layouts they have and if it's something that's going to apply to you or not. But overall, the build quality the, the, the materials and everything it feels premium it looks premium and it feels just really really comfortable to use now the type of quality here that I can feel uh, maybe maybe it actually lends itself well over time so that it doesn't um, you know wear out that quickly but I can't really tell that it's just an impression that I have so that's the first impressions of the low free and now what we need to do is we need to plug it in and uh, start testing it out and see uh, what's the delay type uh, of time when it is wired when it's wireless how the connectivity is and all of that goodness so yeah let's go as far as the latency goes for the low free flow keyboard um, i use the speed camera or the speed mode of the camera so i recorded footage at uh, 480 frames per second and then measured and uh, did the conversion to kind of convert that into milliseconds to get a value and to you know kind of have a better understanding of what we're talking about here and when you're using the keyboard in the usb wired mode as expected you get the most consistent and uh, shortest latency and that one basically averages out at around 54.95 so 55 milliseconds of delay time in uh, wired mode now when you switch to wireless mode it has actually two values because once you are typing so once the bluetooth is active and the keyboard is actually doing its job and it's actively transmitting information that latency is of course higher than when it is on the usb wired mode at 98 and a half milliseconds so that's the average typing delay latency uh, via bluetooth is 98.53 milliseconds but 
there is the initial wake up key and that one actually takes a significantly longer time and that's actually it's 385.86 milliseconds so that's not the greatest thing but it's certainly not like a unique thing um, I've seen other keyboards that do behave that way but I've also seen keyboards that do not have that initial delay so 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 aggressively set so that's something to definitely keep in mind well, all right so low free flow is it flow yeah it's called flow keyboard i really love the build quality and the impression that it actually gives you the typing itself i think it's very responsive it's very tactile and it's a pleasant pleasant feel however the things that i do miss from the initial impressions as well they stuck with me as well which is i would have loved if it had adjustable feet both forward and back so that you can adjust your typing angle because depending on your desk situation your writing situation things like that it's always a good idea to have a flexible option available for your keyboard and that's something that I'm actually actively looking for in the keyboards that I use that is unfortunately not the case with the low free flow and I'm not sure why because it would not have uh, affected any of the low profile uh, attributes of it so it can still be low profile in its lowest profile form but you can you know adjust it to a writing angle that suits more your needs and that's unfortunately not something that we have other than that um the shape and the spacing between the keys uh, something that i've talked about quite a bit it's not a bad thing i think that you can get used to it but the rounded corners are giving it a much much smaller footprint which might be exactly what you're looking for or might be exactly what you want to stay away from that is a 100 percent personal subjective individual type of a case by case matter so, so that's something that you need to be aware of as a buyer what your personal preferences are and what your needs are when you're typing but you need to be aware of that yeah the, the shape of these keys it's a little bit rounded and it's actually real estate is a little bit smaller than the regular rectangular ones and that might cause your uh typing habits to kind of go a little bit askew that being said the uh, adaptation time for me was extremely fast so for me yes that was a little bit of an issue at first but within a day I'm pretty sure yeah within a day that was all kind of gone and it just worked fine and then I could enjoy the pleasant tactile feel the pleasant quality and uh, tactile uh, responsiveness of the uh, keys that are not too clicky or clacky they're kind of just right and it's very very satisfying the feel and the sound is very very satisfying and overall the product feels like a high quality product in addition you do have the ambient light which is a nice addition if that's something that you're looking for great that's kind of your thing i'm not totally into it but it's nice that it has that something that i'm very much into is whether or not caps lock is on or off and thankfully this keyboard has that i would have preferred personally uh, i always prefer instead of having an ambient light to have actually um, trans translucence or the ability to illuminate which keys are here so that you can actually use the keyboard in the darkness but that's not the case here and that's not something that we can uh, use that way so that's something to also keep in mind it has additional functionalities which are fine the latencies are fine it has both the USB wired method which is great if that's what you're looking for and as I mentioned in the in the beginning I really like that the included USB cable is a right angled cable and that it sits very firmly in this port so that you when you're moving that keyboard around you don't have 
the uh, it's not gonna disconnect immediately or something like that. You really need to pull really, really hard uh, for it to kind of accidentally pop off. So that's a very, very nice thing to see. And finally, for me, the biggest advantage of this keyboard, other than its build quality and comfort of typing and is everything, what good is it if you can't have the flexibility of using it on multiple devices and the low free flow has that, which I think is extremely important because it has the Bluetooth capability as well, which is absolutely fantastic because it just makes everything different. I can use it with the books devices, I can use it with the Superno device or uh, Android tablets, my, my laptop, my PC, it doesn't matter. And uh, you can uh, have those three pre-connected devices and you can just switch from function one, two, and three, and then you switch between three devices that are stored in the memory, which is super, super cool. And that makes it uh, really usable uh, because it's so small, very, very portable as well. So I think all around, I really, really do like this one. Would I use it personally? No, because I uh, use ergonomic keyboards. So I like those that are split and um, yeah, have a free flowing thing and different kind of angle. So I'm used to this, not this, which is something that this type of keyboard actually forces you to do. But if this was a keyboard that I was uh, kind of used to and I'm used to a normal, regular kind of layout of a keyboard, then I would use it. And another thing that prevents me from using it is that it does not have a Nordic uh, key set layout, nor an option for it yet. I don't know if they're gonna make it or not, but yeah. So uh, it's not for me, but that just doesn't mean that it's not for everybody. I am absolutely certain there's gonna be quite a few people who are or would be very, very, very happy with a uh, low free flow keyboard because it definitely has a lot to offer and it's one of the better feeling low profile or yeah this is probably the best feeling low profile keyboard that i have tried up to date i hope you liked the video and i hope that you found it interesting or uh, useful if you did please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below also if you like the work that i do on my deep guide you can help the independence of the channel by visiting mydeepguide.com shop you can check out mdo my daily organizer there and see if that hyperlinked pdf organizer that covers all of your yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily organizing and diary needs can be used for personal or professional needs and use cases if that's a product for you or not. How do you find that out? Well, you can check out the uh, multitudes of video that are uh, prepared in the MDO playlist on my deep guide. And you can get all the information that you need and see if MDO is a product for you or not. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.